exported spreadsheets and other documents to produce a consolidated report on Excel that is running these companies. So for all their claims, whether it be particle accelerators, weather changing weapons, UFOs, microwave radiation, microbugging devices, mind control techniques, whatever it is, the underlying or the overriding theme and truth is when it comes to the aspiration and the reality, they are two entirely different things. Now they know this. They've known this for a long, long time. But they also came up with a solution to overcome the gap. And what they came up with and realized is that perception is actually more powerful than reality. You don't, the bank doesn't need to have all its systems connected. It only needs to convince its customers that it does and to mimic as if it does for the confidence of the customers to stay with the bank and forgive those frequent mistakes that occur because the systems are not connected. The same with the weather altering devices. The society and the ruling elite only need to build something that creates the impression of weather altering, whether it does or it doesn't, and then to send out there that it does for enough people to believe, and if they believe, then it's real. Now this is precisely, precisely what the existing system has been using the truth movement for over and over again. Now if people are happy in their life, and thankfully most people on this planet are happy in their life, if awareness loves life, then being happy in life and living life is the ex ultimate expression. So there's nothing wrong with that. It means that energetically they can serve. They can serve their energy. They're conservative. They're happy. They're neutral. They don't add. They don't subtract. There are many, but they are not going to be great generators of the kind of energy that society needs. If the ruling elite is based on ego and is based on fear and is based on angst, then the gold seam, the gold star, the prize isn't mum and dad, it's you. Because if you've been knocked out of the system because you've lost your home, your job, your children have been taken away from you, something has caused you to wake up, then you are producing more energy for the ruling elite than 10,000 people who are happy with their life and are energy neutral. You are sustaining the system, not the 10,000 people who are happy who you think won't wake up. You are sustaining it. Why? Because you are manifesting and expressing and designing and most importantly, you are using your powers of visualization to maintain the prison unwittingly, not change it. Now, some people might say, I don't agree with that and I don't mean that and how could you say that? I'm not, I'm not an agent of the, of, of the New World Order. I know. I don't, I'm not accusing anyone of being an agent of, of the New World Order, certainly not myself. But I give the example of what we've done with Eucadia. Eucadia is a massive and complex idea. Why? Because we need a massive and complex alternate idea to visualize a world free of fraudism, messianism, mental illness, ego, the craziness of their system. But what's missing is having ourselves visualize that on a regular basis. Visualizing the societies being in place. Visualizing the money system being in place. Visualizing the world 
where heaven is here on earth. Visualizing it. Visualizing the fact that everything is going to be okay, no matter how many earthquakes, no matter how many hurricanes and twisters and tsunamis. Because we have the power to manifest. And that is what the system needs from us. Let's not feed the system anymore. I'm sick of feeding the system. I hope you are too. So cognitive law is uh, going extremely well. And we cover a lot of areas there, whether it be uh, ego, whether it be the connection of, of influence and environment. I'm going to read one to you because I think this one is, is uh, very relevant to what we're talking about. And it's one, I'm going to use this one because this one to me made me smile about environment. I'll just call it up in a second. One second. And this is just a sample of cognitive law. This is environment. Environment is the nature, conditions, and dimension in which a higher order life form projects and perceives the reality of existence. That's a very dry sounding uh, definition. Let me, let me continue and then you'll see what I'm, I mean. The word environment is derived from three Latin words being en, meaning in or within, virio, meaning to be green, to be fresh, flourish, and mens, mentis, meaning mind. Hence, the literal meaning of the environment from its origins is, this is the meaning of the word environment, within a flourishing mind, or simply within one's imagination. Now, think about that. We grow up and the government says we've got to clean up the environment, we've got to help the environment, the environment's in danger, that we live in the environment, that we are a product of our environment. And the word itself, M-E-N-T, it's a sign. M-E-N-T means mind. Government, control of the mind. Parliament, mind. If you see the word M-E-N-T at the end of a word, that means mind. So suddenly, when we look at something as simple as presuming what is the environment, we find the word literally means within one's imagination. Well, let me explain a couple more, just so we've got a bit on here and we'll, we'll move through. Environment is equivalent to a wakeful and conscious dream projected over the perceived dimension of the external world so that the two become indistinguishable. Now, if you want to use an analogy, an idea, think of it in terms of radar. If you want to detect changes in the environment, or so I've used the word, <laughs> it changes of objects in front of you, then what radar does is you send out a signal and then anything that is moving will cause the signal to be disrupted. It's like throwing a, 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 a pebble into a lake and it causes an equal series of ripples. If something flows through that, then the ripples coming back will be different. Well, that's exactly what your mind does. It projects an image, an impression, an approximation of the world, and then anything that changes is then picked up. It's a way for the mind not to have to focus on every single nook and cranny. Think about it. If you had to go into your office and focus on every single thing in your office or every th single thing in your room or your home, even a si one room in your home, I mean, it is overwhelming. Look at a bookshelf. If you try to read every single title, instead what the mind says is, I have a bookshelf full of 20 books of multicolors that the mind is happy 
to just to focus on that. So the mind has created that approximation and it's only when you want to focus on something will the mind say, okay, what do you want to look at now? It's a filtering mechanism. It's a coping mechanism. An environmental projection over the dimension of the world is only ever an approximation of the actual underlying world. In some cases, this approximation can entirely delete actual objects and senses as well as include new ones that don't exist in reality. This is a natural and normal feature. But it also means that if we are being disrupted and unbalanced by fear, element, sun, enforcements, attacks, law, whatever they project on us, then we are allowing the environment to be modified, our mind projection to be modified by them. It works both ways. You, all of you have the power, if you work together, to project an environment that is heaven on earth, that is the end to the madness. And if you do that, then not only would your minds help manifest the reality of that, and the reality of the improvement of your situation, but it will cause others. It is a self-fulfilling process. So here in one word, and I know I've spent a bit of time just on this one word environment, and I have wanted to share with you a whole range of others, but in the, in the respective time and in the amount of information we cover in these calls, I don't want to bombard you. This is not reading of a, of a race call. <laughs> it's giving you examples to show you just how it's coming together. In this one example with environment we see, far from environment being some objective landscape in which we operate, even the wall in front of us is a projection of the mind. We see and see it as real, but it is really just an extension of the mindscape. If your life is dark and dreary, if you are struggling to find a reason to live, if you can see no way out of your problems, then please consider that the environment that you are in is every bit a projection of you. Take control of the mechanism. The detail will come and is coming, but take control. Let's not feed the system anymore. Well, as I said at the start, everything is going to be okay if we use our powers wisely. And our most powerful power, our most influential power, is the power to manifest and to visualize. As much as the system wants us to be the, the, uh, the enemy that it needs, we have bigger things to do. And it's high time that we become more active in that and, and less passive. And for all of you who continue to do wonderful things, thank you. For all of you who will be listening to this call, thank you. And I look forward to sharing with you, and I keep saying this week on week, but I really look forward to being able to share with you, once Cognitive Law is published, an amazing gift that brings this to light as law, as awareness, and brings it out. So thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, looks like we'll go to the phone line first here with East Pennsylvania, which might not be East Pennsylvania, but see who that is. Are you there? There you go. That's Hi, amazing, how are you Frank. going? Good. You hit the same subject we've been talking about all week. I've been, I've been with uh, Elder, which is the Toltec Elder, and then the, the Kugis, which I, I'm not saying that correctly, but they're from uh, Brazil. And uh, we've been speaking about uh, environmental cleaning up the waters again and bringing, bringing the veins of the earth back and making them healthy once again. That is amazing. You, every, every, every week you're hitting the same subjects we're talking about. 
<laughs> well, it's not intentional, but I'm glad. 